Hey scrapbook friends, it's Nicole and today I'm going to show you how to use a very cool double hexagon technique to create this fun fish border, kind of a fish and a fishing net border for your scrapbook pages. Now you can do any kind of technique, any design that you want. The main part I want to show you in this is how to take what is ordinarily a single width um, punch or thickness of the honeycomb border maker cartridge and be able to have it be double width. So that's the main technique I want you to take away from this. This is just a border that you can create using the technique that I'm about to teach you. All right, here we go. Okay, to create this border, I'm going to be using pieces from the vitamin C collection. The papers are from the designer paper pack. You could also use some of the tone on tone papers if you want. Um, and then we're going to be using the fish from the sticker pack. Now, of course, you can use any collection that you want, but I wanted to show you something that is currently available in case you want to duplicate this exactly. You're also going to need your border maker system, the honeycomb punch, honeycomb border maker cartridge, and the ribbon weave border maker cartridge. So we're using these two border punches. We're using the custom cutting system, the small and the medium, with just the red and the green blade. We don't, we're not gonna use the blue. You definitely, definitely need a repositionable tape runner, probably a regular tape runner, your, some scissors, the microchip scissors are great, and you really do need some post-it notes. I like the three inch post-it notes. This is vitally important for the technique that we're gonna do with the double width honeycomb for the border. Okay, so let's start with that because that's kind of what makes this border especially unique. Um, and we are going to cut out of this blue watery paper. And so what you need to do is to cut a strip four and one quarter inches wide of what you're going to have for your net. So we're gonna cut this at four and a quarter inches wide. And then you're gonna fold it in half and try to be as careful as you can, matching up this edge. It's a little tricky, I know. Folding is can be kind of hard. But I find if I match the outside edge first as best I can, and then kind of, you know, go out from the sides, top and bottom. So now I have this piece that started four and a half, it's folded in half. You can see that I didn't fold as well as I thought I did. So it, um, this edge is a little bit longer. So when you work with this, you want the edge, um, you wanna be able to see where it didn't line up because that's important to make sure that this is going to work. So then you take your uh, paper guide for the border maker system Actually, you probably don't even need to fold this out because we're not going to use that. We are going to use this magnet strip to align this, and you absolutely need these post-it notes. And you'll be able to reuse these. These don't actually get punched through. Take your folded piece, and the folded edge is going to go out toward the cutting section. And then you want to align this so that the edge of your paper lines up with this magnet. And because I was a hair off, I'm actually gonna go a teeny bit over the edge of the magnet. You wanna make sure it's straight. And then you take your post-it note and the sticky on this goes across this way. So part of the sticky is going on my paper and part of it is going on my uh, border maker so that it holds it in place and doesn't let it slide. This one really requires a lot of precision. Um, I mean, and it's not the end of the world if it's not perfect, but definitely want precision. And you probably wanna practice this a few times. Do not use cardstock for this. This is absolutely only something with designer paper because you are folding it and then going to punch through two thicknesses. I do not want you to damage your um, honeycomb punch. Okay, so now this is on here. You notice it does not align with the paper guide and that's okay. That's what we want. We don't want it to align with the paper guide. So now we're gonna take the 
honeycomb cartridge, pop that in the cartridge holder, and punch. And for whatever reason, this one, I found that I really do have to make doubly sure that I have it pressed up against the, the guide. Um, just maybe because I'm punching through two thicknesses, I don't know. But press that up against the guide. And what that does is it means that it doesn't cut off the edge. It leaves this edge. And so when you unfold it, you get this double width um, honeycomb that I think looks like a lot like kind of like a fishing net. So many fun things. Honeycomb for sure. But for this project, I thought it looked like a fun fishing net. So it this is a little bit of a practice practice makes perfect technique. I did have to try it a few times to make it work. But if you use this four and a quarter inches wide and make sure that your paper, the shortest piece of your paper is along the edge of the of the magnet strip down here and it doesn't slide, it will work. Now I do, I have had it happen where, let's see, um, where it, it cut through, um, you know, I was doing a sample earlier and it, it like it didn't line up at one section. That would not be the end of the world if it didn't line up because you could still just stick that down together. But I love the technique of having it um, be one solid piece or one single piece to do your to do your little fishing net. OK, so that's our first piece. That's the hardest one. And you do have these little scraps. You can use these post-it notes. We, they're not ruined or punched. You do have these little stri strips that you could use for another project. Don't throw those away. All right, next we're gonna build our base for this. And so the original piece that we started with was four and a quarter inches wide. And you need that so that the, um, so that the, the fold will line up with that magnet strip. And you know, I, I tried it lots of different ways. That was the easiest I could find. All right, for the next, we're gonna do a base to put under this. It's gonna be two inches. And I'm using this, um, paper with the little seashells on it. I thought that was fun. And make sure with, if you're using this paper that you want it to be this vertical. I guess if you wanted to do it the other way, that would actually look cute too. You could do it across the bottom. This doesn't have to be a, a vertical border. I tend to make that my default. So we're going to need a two inch base. And then we're going to use this blue kind of stripey. This is the back these sideways stripes, but this is kind of this blue on blue. And this piece is going to be a two and a quarter inch, oops, two and a quarter inch for the mat. And that's maybe not the best description for what this piece is, but I didn't know what else to call it. So this is our little mat. And so now we're gonna assemble these. We're going to be using our um, repositionable adhesive. And you know, I like to use one of these um, power project or power, yeah, power sort box folders to do mine. Lots of things you can use under your repositional adhesive to keep your work surface from getting messed up. So just be pretty generous with the adhesive. You don't have to cover the whole thing, but um, maybe put a little extra kind of down that fold in the middle so it doesn't bump up. All right, and then I can just rub that off. All right, and then I'm gonna position this on the two inch base. So that's my little net. And then put my base, I probably would use regular adhesive for this truthfully, but I don't have that right here. So I'm just gonna use this on the dark blue. And so that's basically the base of your border. So we started with the four and a quarter inch wide, folded that to punch it, then the two inch base and the two and a quarter inch mat. Okay, and now we're gonna start doing the decorative circles that go on here. And you, again, you could use any colors that you want. This doesn't have to be, um, you know, only with this vitamin C collection. But I liked the sand to kind of just go along with this color scheme. So we're gonna do one using the medium circle. So I have the large circle just so you can see. We're gonna not use the large, we're using the medium circle 
and the small circle. And I want you to start with the green blade because you want to save the red to be your mat later. So we're going to do the green blade on both of these. We're going to cut one from the medium circle. and two from the small. And I always like to kind of cut down the, like a vertical stripe so that if later on I want to um, have some more of this paper for something else, I do still have enough that I could make a full border. So, But if you had a little smaller scrap of this too, that would be perfect. So I'm just, it's got the bamboo on the back, but we're gonna use the sand. And then we're gonna punch out some, um, the ribbon ribbon weave chain. I don't know why I can't remember the name of that. We're going to punch that out of this green leaf paper. We're actually going to use the back side, um, but this is the one I f seem to find when I'm looking in my paper. So take the honeycomb out. We're going to swap back in the ribbon weave, and we're going to use this just norm like normal. So line it up with the edge of the paper guide. If you do not know how to use the border maker system, I will link to the my video that demonstrates how to do it because this is a must-have tool. So we're going we're gonna to punch two borders using this one. And that's just to give us enough extra just to make sure we have all that we need. I think actually maybe we could have gotten away with just doing one. But I like to have two just to be able to fill in all my little spots. All right, so here's my ribbon weave chain. Oops, I forgot to put my blade back on. That can be deadly. Put that cover back on. All right, now we're done with this for now. Maybe we're done with it completely actually. Clean off the trash. I always keep a trash can right here on the floor next to me when I'm punching. And we're going to take the um, repositional adhesive again. Shouldn't have put this away so quickly. And you could, if you wanted to, maybe use this side for the seaweed, but I, it, it was too busy for me. So I'm just going to put repositional adhesive kind of... Not, it doesn't have to cover the whole thing, of course, but kind of in this um, this little middle section, there is, at the end, you may want to add some to the, um, to the edges just to make it work. I tried putting this on the paper and then cutting it out after, and it just didn't seem to work. So I'm going to put this on here. These microchip scissors are great. They have a Teflon blade, so it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of sticky adhesive on there. And then you just kind of um, stagger these other pieces on here to fill in this whole section with that seaweed. And then take the extra little piece and do the sides of a couple of them, just so you can fill in that last spot. And that, you know, nobody's gonna care if, if there's not, if it's not perfectly exact in here, but it's just fun to fill that in. And like I say, I did try to, to cut this ahead and I'll show you my practice. I tried to cut it, um, put it on here first and then cut it out and it just messed it up. It didn't either didn't cut through or, you know, so that was my, that's just pulled out of my trash. That was my test that did not work. Um, actually, I put a little bit on here too. This one. So I fill in all of this and then you just do have to just take your scissors and just trim this off. I wish that I could have made it work with um, putting it on first and then trimming because that would avoid this. Ah, I didn't stick it down. That would avoid this little fussy cutting around the circle. But, you know, maybe you'll have better luck than I have. 
had maybe you're more patient than I am but it just was it just kept catching on stuff and messing things up so and I suppose if I would have trimmed these smaller before I adhered them that could have worked too these little ones on the edge I didn't press down hard enough so that's Okay, sorry, that's a little fiddly to do this. So this is probably, this is probably harder than punching the double honeycomb. Okay, but look how cute it looks, like little seaweed. So this one now, I've basically used this whole thing for one circle. So now I'm going to use the other piece for the other two little circles. And, and I think I'm just going to do... I'm not going to try and fill that up the whole way. I think I'll just put, you know, one piece in here and one piece in here. So you don't, you probably didn't need the whole two strands, but, um, but one was not enough. And we'll do the same thing with these. We'll just flip it over and trim off the excess. just to get our circles back. And this is just some little seaweed for our fish to hide in. All right. Got a little sticky on it now, a little harder to clean up. Okay. Now we're gonna to wanna to make a mat for these little circles. I, you could do it just by themselves, but I think the mat really makes it pop. And I'm gonna use this same um, dark blue paper that we used for the mat on our, um, on our strip. And we're gonna use the same um, circles, but we used the green blade for the main circle. So now we can use the red blade for our mats. So. Let's cut a circle. One medium circle and two. I like to put the um, put the feet in kind of when this is on its side and that way I know I got both feet in the groove. And then when I pick it up, I pick up the whole thing so the feet don't come out because if you have one of the feet out, I'll show you. Um, I'll show you what happens if, if your custom cutting system, if one of the feet is out. It doesn't happen as much with the red because the just the way it's built. But so here's where I show you without the feet. So if you ever go to cut and it does this, see how it just tore my paper? That is a sign that both of your feet aren't in the groove. So make sure that both of your feet are in this groove and then the blade is always um, right there parallel to the to the cutting guide and you get a clean cut instead of this tear. All right, cover it back up because this is sharp and I do know lots of people that have cut themselves. That's why lots of us keep band-aids in our crop kit. All right, and now we're gonna take these um, little our little seaweed and mount them on their mats. So our fish have a home and I am kind of using this vertical line still and aligning it so that my seaweed is all going to be going up vertically. Looks like I didn't quite cut this right so I'll trim that edge off. I've been using the custom cutting system for more than 20 years and I still sometimes have trouble getting it to line up just right. Okay so now I'm just going to put adhesive on half, oops, on half of my large circle and put it off the top right here. And then we're kind of going to use this rule of threes. I always, there's another one. I always like, um, I always like to have that, that asymmetrical look. Um, oops, I put my adhesive in the wrong section. That's, that's the very nice thing about reposition. I'll just rub it off and Try again. I'm going to put this one here, and then this one's just going to go right in the middle. So I can put my adhesive. Whoops. Sorry, guys. Put my adhesive wherever I want. I'm just going to put it down here. And then I'm going to take my little fishy stickers. There are three of them. This guy's the biggest. 
So I'm going to put him up here at the top. You could, if you wanted, you know, put this on a foam square, something like that. Um, but I'm, I'm going to have them both swim in. So here, a little green guy is going to go here. He's very well camouflaged. And then the little pink guy is here, down here at the bottom. And I'm even going to take a couple of seashells and stick these down here. I think I'll do it like this. Stick these down here at the bottom. So there you go. Here's our little fishing uh, fishing net border with the double honeycomb technique. All right, so I hope you found this to be um, enjoyable and that this is a, a project that will help enhance your own scrapbook albums. I would love to see your finished product. If you would like to share at my um, on my Facebook page, um, nicolescrapbooks.com, that's the best way I know to have people share. So I'd love to have you share over there and see what other um, variations of this double uh, hexagon border maker cartridge technique you can do. Thanks so much and happy scrapbooking.